Just wanted to do this very quick video. Uh, it might help anybody who had the same issue as I had. What I've got is a Ellard garage door with a motor and a remote control fob. And what I wanted to do was add some sort of capability so you could do it by uh, using the Alexa open and close the garage door. So I had a look inside this unit and I could see that there was these wires on the right hand side that were empty. Um, and they were essentially for a manual switch or a push button switch, which looked like this. And what you get here is if you short out the ground zero volts to the D for close or the ground to the U for up, what happened is the garage door will go up or down and you only need to short it for a second. Um, so essentially, if you were to take the ground and up for oh, that must be the down yeah that's already down that's not going to work so if you were to take the ground and up you hear it click and the door goes up you then do the same again and do the ground and down and the door would go down so I knew it was halfway there. Next thing I thought of was this, after looking around on YouTube, was you could buy one of these boxes, uh, a S on off or a son off. And there's various versions of it. This one I bought was about 28 pounds. It's the four channel pro. And this version's got inching mode. Now inching mode is essentially a momentary push button. So you can set it to press a button just for a second, which is exactly what you need for these garage doors. You still got the option of using the buttons on the side for up and down. And the remote control still works for up and down. Next thing that I did then was to wire this up. So uh, you can set it up. There's lots of little toggle switches inside. It's all live at the moment, so I won't take the cover off. But there's little toggle switches that you can move with a small screwdriver. And it puts the different channels, one, two, three, four, into different modes. So mode one is door up. Mode two is door down, and mode three I'll talk about in a moment is about lights. But looking at one and two first of all, first thing I need to do is give it some power. Now I've done this using 12 volts uh, before, uh, and I've just now finally wired it up using uh, the full 240 volts. Um, and you either use a small connector, one of those, one of those, where is it? There it is. One of those to go in for the low voltage, or I've actually pulled the 240 volts, sorry, off of the main input into this um, piece of kit. So, channel one, channel two. What I've done here then is I've taken out of here, the options is normally open, the common wire and normally closed. And, the connections inside are just little push uh, buttons here and then you can poke a wire in they're really simple to use and give a good strong hold as well so the common wire which is the middle one i've used a blue wire and i've connected up to the zero volts ground on the garage door opener Rather than putting two wires into that same screw, I've just done a jumper between that and uh, on channel one and channel two. Um, but it's essentially the same as running two wires up to that right-hand side screw. And then, because it's normally open and you want to close it for a second, you use the normally open uh, left-hand side. And I've run a brown wire from each. The one for channel one, which is door up, goes to the open, so the far left. And the one from channel two goes to the third screw, which is the close. So the common wire, the open and the close. Now, what that does is it basically means that the garage door gets a signal to say open for a second or close for a second. And that then triggers all the other stuff. Remote control still works and the buttons on the side still work. With the proper remote control, 
I think this must have like a rolling code perhaps, um, so it's not programmable. But these units do actually have an option where you can double press. And if you press the remote control, I'm using the other one now, it picks up the signal. But for some reason it's not saving it, so I'm going to work on that. It might be that I need a different remote control. But there's loads of different versions on eBay and Amazon. So I'm going to have a little look for those uh, later on and see if I can figure that out. Because at the moment, the existing remote control, if you press the, oops, it's normally that way, press the up button, it's working. Press the down button, it's working. Now that would actually be fine as long as I didn't want to do this next bit, which is to set the lights up to work with this device at the same time. I can close that panel up now because that one's all finished with. So really I want to just lose those buttons now, so I'll put a bit of tape over those so as people don't use those buttons. And I've labelled this up, so you've got garage door up, garage door down, and then lights, this is the third one. Now when you use the remote control at the moment, it's going to this unit, and it's doing the same as using these buttons. What I want the remote control to do is talk to this unit instead, which is why I need a different one, I think. What I've done with this unit is I've set up, when the door goes up, that this third channel also kicks in and rather than just being on for a, a moment like the up and down so the little red light there when you press the button it's only on for a second with the lights you can set it to be on and stay locked on and that's just using the dip switches inside when you press it, it's either off completely or on completely. And I've got it set up now, so as when I put the garage door up, not only does it put the garage door up, but it also puts the light on. When you put the door down, it turns the light off or turn, turns channel three off. So the way I've got that set up in here is I've taken the third channel to a two-way light switch. Now it was a one-way with just a wire going in and out, like that. Now I've got a common and a one-way switch, and I needed to put in a two-way switch, so you get two screws, two channels here on the light switch, and that's so as it can be turned on by the unit and also by the light switch. And the only reason I've done that is just in case anything ever goes down, um, I can still turn the lights on and off using the light switch. But I've covered that up because you shouldn't really need to use it anymore. You can turn the lights on and off here, or when you open it using an Alexa command or using the mobile device, it should just turn it straight on anyway. But the wiring for this is the common wire comes straight through. Rather than hitting the switch, it now comes up to here, to channel three on the center for common. And then the normally open and normally closed that's two wires going back to the switch. And then on the switch, on line one and line two, those wires connect, doesn't matter which way round. And then the original common on the switch, that now is the wire that goes off to the lights. So, looking at a switch, the power coming in, so the live power now goes directly to the centre pin of the, uh, the sun off. The normally open can go to line one, normally closed can go to line two, and then this common wire here, that's the one that now goes back out to the light unit itself. So now when I tell it through Alexa or by clicking on the button uh, on the phone to turn the door open, uh, the door opens and the light comes on and when you do uh, door closed the door goes down and the light goes off You've still got the manual override for the lights if you want it i hope that's some help to somebody um, it would have been helpful if i could have found something that told me exactly how to do it um, but it seems to be all working so thanks very much okay, so finally i just wanted to show you this working um, so the intention here is if i open alexa on this phone uh, but it was the same as if you use it on the device in the house directly or using push buttons or whatever it might be. 
what I'm expecting it to do is to open the door and turn the lights on and then when I try to close the door it will be to close the door and turn the lights off. Let's give it a whirl. Open garage door. Okay. So what happens is channel one opens up for a second, channel three turns on. Close garage door. So we'll do that again. Watch out for those lights. If you get channel one light will turn on for a second, channel three light will turn on and stay on. Open garage door. Close garage door. 